Remember a while ago when I did the three part guide on merching? Well I was thinking about that, and that guide is pretty complex, and it's a really long video, so I thought I could simplify that a little bit and make it easier on you. And me personally, I only have one golden rule for merching, but I expanded that to 10 after I thought about it for a while, and added some stuff that I think every merchant should take into account. So you can follow these rules if you want, your choice, but I think they're pretty good. And we're going to start with my number one rule. Don't trust anyone. It's pretty easy and pretty effective. So you want to avoid being vulnerable. And that means a few things, but mostly don't give scammers a chance to scam you. Because they will exploit your trust. And if you don't give anybody a chance to scam you, you're probably not going to get scammed. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but often overlooked. But aside from that, you could be vulnerable to false information, you know, people lying to you, or misleading information, when people don't really know what they're talking about, or they don't take everything into account. So because of this, you have to take all statements carefully. Consider the effects of that and maybe why people came up with those conclusions. Maybe they have ulterior motives or anything, really. But if you absolutely need information, ask several sources and piece together the puzzle yourself. The only person you should trust is yourself. Because you're not going to mislead yourself unless you mess up. And that's really something you shouldn't do. But we're human and we make mistakes, but I trust myself more than anyone else. And that's just the way to go. Rule number two, nothing is set in stone. The economy is ever changing, usually with the factors of supply, demand, and price. And people say supply and demand affect price, and that's generally true because that's what nature does, but not always. And it could change at any rate of speed. You know, you could have something big happen and a bunch of prices change. Or the economy is pretty slow. But it will happen. And it could even be forced to. Because of the economy changing over time, there's no real concrete prices or anything in the long term. Everything's a variable. So you should really keep that in mind. Important stuff. Rule number three, net worth is not constant. The true value of items in gold changes over time. And we're not just talking about the actual price, but the utility of the item, as we call it in economics. Basically, the satisfaction somebody gets out of something, which is another word for demand. And with those factors, nothing is really said to stay the same over time as explained in the previous rule. So you're either losing money or gaining money as time goes on, dependent on how the economy goes. So from that, even trades are usually not even. Let's say the going rate for XPs is four grand, and you buy one for four grand, and then all of a sudden a new event starts. People usually rush to buy chests, and because of this, there will be more XP's in the server. Well, XP's might devalue to say three grand. Well, you just traded four grand for three grand and lost money. And things can work the other way too, but that's just an example. And another thing I should note, if you're ever trying to compare yourself to somebody from another world, that's never going to be accurate because each economy is different. I thought I'd just throw it in there. Because if you say, find somebody from another world and think they're doing better than you, they might not be. So don't really use that as a way of judging yourself or other people. On the rule four, time is money. Gold is worth more the sooner you get it. Because you can reinvest it or just hold on to it in order to buy things later. And you should demand more profit for more time. If something is going to take a while to sell, you better be getting a lot for it. 
Because if you can flip a bunch of small items fast, then you can generate money real fast and be able to reinvest that and stack up real quick. And because of that, you should avoid even item to item trades. Say you're trying to sell something for 750 grand, right? And somebody offers you an item that's going for 750 grand. Well, you're not really going anywhere, are you? You're just getting more work. And you could just sell it for the gold itself, right? Avoid all that hassle. So I say don't do it unless there's a reason to. If the items may be easier to sell, or if you get more than it's worth, like somebody giving you something that's worth a million for something that's worth 750. Just some examples. On the rule 5, avoid waiting for trades. Because people rarely come through on prolonged trades. Because they usually can't get the gold or they lose interest in buying items. Rarely does it work out. So you should try to push for deals to happen immediately. And I'm not saying like, hey, take this trader and bust in your kneecaps. But like, just kind of easily push them. You don't want to scare them away. And this is usually best for hard to sell items. And if you could trade faster, you grow faster, that kind of deal. So I'll even do it with things that sell pretty good if I could just get rid of it. But you might have to take slightly less for some things. As long as you're making profit and you weigh it out, you should be fine. If you have to, wait, but don't hold the item for them. And by that I mean keep the form, but if somebody offers more, just take the higher offer. First come, first serve, right? Next rule, be adaptive. And you have to note what the economy favors and act accordingly to that. The four general things are plaid items, lux gear, raid gear, and rare items. Side with whatever is selling best at the moment, and you should do pretty good. Next, stay open-minded is a good one. The economy favors different things at different times, and this is usually gold or items. So you should plan for the present and the future. Because if you just plan for the present, sure, you might be able to get some money. But if you plan for the future, you can really take the economy by storm. So you should come up with the courses of action, you know, plans, maybe buying a bunch of items when there's not that much gold and vice versa. And you should always have backup plans in case things go wrong. Personally, I prefer the pessimistic approach. I'm not optimistic. If you imagine the worst things happening, then things can only turn out that way or better than you expected. If you try and look at it from an optimistic approach, you might fall short on something, some things might catch you off guard. That's just my opinion. Rule 8. Keep a good reputation. A good portion of merching is your image, your reputation. And the three main factors of this is trustworthiness, fairness, and attitude. And all three of these things can either be on true perceptions or just assumptions. Ideally, you don't want people assuming, because that could be wrong. Trustworthiness is like, if people would trust you with their money, if people would trust your opinion, things of that nature. Fairness, your prices, your assumptions, attitude, you know, how you act. Try not to be too egotistical or anything. Try and help people out. Be the good guy, be the better man. And you should avoid things that could damage your image when possible. Never scam anybody. It's not worth it. Please don't do that. But things that could damage your image besides that would be things that play on sympathy. Because usually the people that will go after you are sympathetic people. And this could be things that are right or wrong. One thing that gets bashed a lot is dicing. Because people will get mad at you for exploiting people's gambling habits. Mixed feelings, you know. And there's also other things to play on sympathy. 
One thing that I personally break, I buy scammed items. And people were like, Fury, you shouldn't do that, that's wrong. Well, from my point of view, buying scammed items is actually a good thing, because I could rip the person off really bad. If I don't buy the item, somebody else is going to buy it, and they might sell it off in all or something. I'm honest about it. Some people can't see that, but not everyone's perfect, and not everyone thinks the whole situation through and from every side. It's just something you're going to have to deal with. Rule number nine, no refunds. Because people could possibly take advantage of you. I had multiple times in the past where people would buy my item, try to sell it behind my back, and return it when it didn't work. But guess what? Screw you, I'm not letting that happen. Aside from that, though, it messes up the flow of merching, because you're moving backwards and slowing down your gains. It's not really worth it to do it. And it's a possible reputation hit, but guess what? We gotta go under some damage control here. We can't be the perfect person. We have to move forward, and we have to try and take the best of both worlds here. If I messed up, you know what people probably say? Screw you, Fury, you're on your own, and that's just how it's gonna go. And I kind of agree with that. If somebody messes up, why should I take the hit for it, right? And that's how I think about this, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. And for our last rule, don't be afraid to take losses. I know you don't like hearing that, but we have to go over it. Things don't always go as planned. You can have sharp price drops, or gradual price drops. The sharp ones usually happen when something unexpected happens, like Legacy and the Luck Shop. The gradual ones are things that are just bound to fall over time, like gear. Now, it is better to take a small loss now than to take a large one later. Let me give you an example of that. Back in 2013, I bought some Dark Flame Greaves for 950 grand. In 2014, I was offered 2 million, but that's something that, you know, was from a 2011 boss, something that hasn't spawned in years, and would only, in theory, keep going up and up and up. Well, they introduced Legacy and brought that boss back for whatever reason, and everyone immediately hated the stuff that it could drop. And... I sold my pants for 500 grand on the first day. That's a 450 grand loss. Well, you know what's worth today? Like 50 grand. So even though I lost a lot of money, I would have lost a lot more if I waited. So you should really be positive that there's little or no hope for the item before doing this. And you should weigh it out and see. Like, gear will fall over time. Aggie Tridents used to be the best weapon in the game, and now they're far from it. But if you think that you can sell the item for a decent amount within a decent amount of time, go for it if you want to take the risk. Your choice. I'll leave that up for you to decide. But there is the exception of when you need quick money for a better deal. Say I have something worth a half million, right? And I have the opportunity to sell it for 450 grand. And that would be the only money I would have at the time. So I sell it, I get 450 grand. And I have the opportunity to buy chests for 30 grand each when they're worth 50 grand each. So I can use that money to stock up on those and then flip the chests and make more than I would have made just selling the item outright. That's just some little tips on trading, little tips on merching. It's not everything to merching, but it's a large part of it. And if you follow these rules, it should take you pretty far. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I hope it was helpful to y'all.